Sarah Huckabee Sanders was the longest serving press secretary in the Trump White House. The daughter of the former Arkansas governor, she grew up surrounded by politics. After Donald Trump was elected president in 2016, Sanders was named deputy press secretary in his new administration. I promise you that I will not let you down. We will do a great job. We will do a great job. Six months later, she was promoted to the top job. It's uh, one of the greatest honors that any person could ever have to work in any capacity within this building and to get to do that up here in such a public way and speak on behalf of the president uh, is absolutely an honor. After serving almost two years in the role, she stepped down in June 2019. She's written a memoir called Speaking for Myself to be released next month. Sarah Huckabee Sanders, can Donald Trump tell the difference between the truth and a lie? Absolutely. My question would be, can the media? Uh, they spent more than two years attacking the president with false claims day after day, negative attack after negative attack, uh, pushing a completely false and ridiculous narrative that the president somehow colluded with Russia. Uh, I don't think they have a lot of credibility to come after this president who spent the last four years delivering on the promises that he set out to do during the 2016 campaign. Um, he made a long list of things that he wanted to get accomplished and he has been ticking those things off one after another including today a major breakthrough and a historic peace deal two uh, peace deals in the Middle East that the president signed at the White House this afternoon. Oh well this isn't from the media this is from General Colin Powell the US Secretary of State during the last Republican administration. He has not been an effective president. He lies all the time. He began lying the day of the inauguration and I don't think that's in our interest. The situation in 2020 has gotten worse. Well, I think it's hard to argue with the results that the president has produced. Uh, certainly, I think he's been cleaning up a lot of messes that were left behind by previous administrations. Um, he signed one of the most historic and large tax cuts in our country's history. He also signed a historic trade agreement between the United States, Canada, and Mexico. He wiped the ISIS caliphate off the map. Let me give you an example from yesterday in a discussion about the California wildfires. The State Secretary for Natural Resources pointed out that America's recently recorded some of its hottest temperatures on record and that that is a factor in the severity of the fires along with land management. The President replied, it'll start getting cooler. The Secretary replied, I wish science agreed with you. The President then replied, I don't think science knows actually. Was that a display of lying? ignorance or insanity? Well, I think what happened yesterday was important. The president going, having that briefing, sitting down um, with the governor of California, who actually a Democrat complimented the president and the federal government's efforts and response and providing resources to California. Yesterday it was a listening session to gather more information. We'll see what the president does following that. Uh, I'm not in the administration, so I can't speak to what next steps they will take. You're not addressing my point, which is that he said that he thinks science doesn't know that the planet is warming. The Washington Post fact check unit has found that during his presidency so far, Donald Trump has made false or misleading claims to the American people more than 20,000 times. Well, like I said, I don't think the media has a lot of credibility when it comes to calling out other people. I think the media has spent the bulk of the president's entire tenure creating fake and misleading stories, not giving good information to the American people. And I don't think they should continue to come after this president who's had a very strong record of success. Even his Democrat uh, adversaries in other states, governors from both New York and California have praised him recently for some of the efforts of the federal government. So to believe you, somebody watching this interview has to believe that every former senior member of the Trump administration who's left and spoken of his unfitness to lead has an axe to grind, that every former senior Republican who's spoken out from Colin Powell to the late John McCain has an axe to grind. And then all of these lifelong Republicans are in cahoots with the Democrats and they're all also tied up in a conspiracy with the mainstream media. And it's the mainstream media that's peddling lie after lie, not Donald Trump. That's what you're asking people to believe. Well, I'm asking people to believe the hundreds of other Republican leaders across this country 
who know and defend this president and talk about all of the, the good things that he has done for this country, myself included. I worked alongside the president for two and a half years. I don't have to listen to the opinion of somebody like Colin Powell, who hasn't spent time with the president, who frankly doesn't have that great of a record in his own experience and the things that they did during the Bush administration. Your book makes it clear that you're heavily guided by your Christian faith and family values. How do you reconcile that with having been the spokesperson for a president who has misled the American people on everything from coronavirus to climate change, who boasts about grabbing women on the pussy, who paid hush money to a porn star to keep her quiet about their alleged relationship, and who's maligned the men and women of America's armed forces? Oh, well... Some of those things are just patently false, but I can tell you actually. from my experience when the liberal uh, mob was attacking me, when the liberals were kicking me out of restaurants, making fun of my hair, my makeup, my fitness to be a parent, saying I should be choked, telling me that I'm vile, not even human. It was the president who was defending me, not the liberal mob, not the elitist who claimed to be all about women's empowerment. But Donald Trump was the one who supported me, defended me and encouraged me and gave Gave me confidence to take on that job. I, I noticed have... that you're not addressing the central premise of my question, which is how somebody like Donald Trump squares with the values you espouse. Look, I, I don't look to any individual person to give me perfection. I'm not looking for a savior in politics. I have that in my faith. There is no perfect person, only one. And as far as I know, he's never run for office. I've never seen Jesus Christ's name on a ballot. If I do, I'll be sure to vote for him. But the, the contrast is between two candidates for us in the United States. It's Donald Trump and Joe Biden. I think Donald Trump has done a good job in four years of fighting for the American people. And I'll think he, I think he will continue continue to do so for the next four years and continue to deliver on the things he set out to do. After the FBI director, James Comey, was fired, as White House spokesperson, you said that countless members of the FBI had told the Trump administration they had no confidence in him. Under oath to the Mueller investigation, you admitted that was not founded on anything, a slip of the tongue and said in the heat of the moment. How often did you have those kinds of slips of the tongue in the heat of the moment as White House spokesperson? Well, I write about this pretty extensively in my book. I actually encourage you to read it because I think you would learn a lot about me and a lot about the president. Um, I address the fact that the Mueller investigation was nothing more than a political hit job set out to take the president down. I knew from the minute I walked in the fact that I was there voluntarily, also to clarify, not under oath, but I would have gladly taken one. Um, and I came not as a target, not as a subject of the investigation and voluntarily participated. And they made me feel like a common criminal. Could you address my question, please? Helpful to an investigation that I knew to be nothing more than a political sham and a witch hunt designed to take the president down for the sin of winning an election. Did you make up that countless members of the FBI told you that they had no confidence in James Comey? I said that I shouldn't have used that word, and that was the mistake that I made. But I had had heard from a number of members of the FBI, both current and former, but I said I shouldn't have used that particular word. Again, I encourage you to read my book. I write all about it in there. Sarah Huckabee Sanders, thanks for your time. You bet. Thanks. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.